Hello friends, my name is Kyle, Real Revelations Everywhere with two S's. In this video, I want to go over really how to begin to be a good teammate and build and be a part of a community worth being a part of. Just being someone that is fun and worth playing with in general, to be completely honest. I'm not going to ask you to just mimic what I do, because that's just not feasible. And I'm a crazy person. <laughs> um, everybody's got their own style of being a good teammate and a bad one at that it goes both ways but at the end of the day there are certain things that nice people do nice there are certain things that constructive people do and there are certain things that not nice and unconstructive people do consistently. There are habits and there are ways of going about things that are generally applicable for just about anyone. You don't have to be the best leader you can be to be a good teammate. You just generally in most ways don't want to be someone that creates unnecessary friction when you could just say something just a little bit differently to gain the desired effect. You're never going to be able to control everything that everyone hears and the way that they perceive it. That's not, that's not up to you entirely. But there are a lot of small things that you can change probably that's going to make what you have to tell people much more digestible or to just deliver it a different way that puts a spin on it that is going to allow people to kind of generally accept it more easily in a lot of ways. And it really starts with making it clear that you're having fun. And that should be the case. I'll tell you right now, when it comes to stuff like professional sports, professional gaming, professional, your profession, what you do as a job, when people say, well, you can't, you have to, work has to be work and you can't like, when people deny that the concept of if you love what you do, you don't work a day in your life, it's not entirely true on its own necessarily, but there is a large amount of truth to that saying. I have personally lived that in several fields. I used to be an audiovisual systems field engineer. I fucking loved that job. And I would work 12, 14, 16 hour days plus even. When I was doing live events when I first started out, there were 20 hour days. But I had a blast doing that. It was worth it to me. It can be that good. And that's something that you need, need, need to find. It's still going to be work, obviously. There's still that that tinge of, it's not going to be easy, and it shouldn't be. But when you find it, that is the case. And that's for work. Now, most people that play video games probably aren't making money off of them literally playing the game. 
them interacting with the game directly is usually a hobby. And if that isn't fun for you... <laughs> what? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Why? What are you doing to... You're doing something to yourself at that point. What are you doing? I, you should be getting joy out of this. And if you don't have fun doing literally anything, that is a fucking huge problem. That's Red Flag Central. That's fucking Red Flag Depot. You gotta fucking get the fuck out of there. And that's self-inventory and managing and battling probably depression and stress which is the mind killer you you have to do whatever you can to handle that whether it's therapy or self-exploration or challenging yourself in different ways upping the ante really putting pressure on yourself to maneuver what you're going through to just even begin to see the light at the tunnel. Whatever you have to do to do that, obviously, it is worth doing. If you... Look, I don't think it's any secret anymore, but if you honestly have ever considered therapy, you should. If you do whatever you can, and it's not always affordable, but recognizing that there's an issue there if you can feel that you need to address it as much as you can and it's it's gonna take so much hard work but you it's it has to be done and if stuff like video games or sports or whatever you do as a hobby isn't it doesn't feel fulfilling anymore that's a dangerous feeling that you have to address first things first this stuff it should be fun it should be stuff that you are looking forward to doing as a balance to relax to challenge yourself to learn and grow as a person this has to be productive and fun if it's not why and if it's not that serious and you're just not having fun why <laughs> you gotta figure that out before it turns into something else before it frustrates you beyond belief and puts strain on friendships or your mental health you can't allow it to do that you can't allow it to eat at you like that it has to be productive it should be fun in every way and in that sense once you're having fun, people understand what you have to say differently. When they understand that you are all about what the team needs to do to win, and you approach it that way, that you are genuinely trying to help everyone, when that is at the forefront of your subconscious and in your heart, you are trying to help people. Like I've said before, when you tell yourself the truth and you respect everybody and you don't assume things and you don't take things personally, when you, are, when you break down how you speak to yourself and when you are genuinely good with your words, you are going to, you are going to be forced to use your words in different ways you can't continue to say things the same way that you used to when you didn't when you weren't doing those things well in the same exact vein when you genuinely want to help everyone around you you are going to start talking to people differently and they are going to recognize that what you have to say is in their best interest you don't have to attack people and force people to see things the same way that you do. You bring them along to an understanding, a middle ground of what you all are trying to get done together. You say things differently. You ask questions 
instead of telling people that they're wrong. That's fucking a waste of time. You're not communicating effectively. When someone goes to <laughs> runs it down C multiple times in a row. You got three rounds in a row and this dude is dying to some default bullshit. Dude just getting tat over and over and over. You don't say, hey, fucking asshole. How about you just fucking get the fuck away from them and get the fuck over here. Say, what's up, man? Like, hey, can can we send somebody with you? Can we maybe send some utility your way to get you into a position that you can operate from more successfully? Like, what can I do for you? How can I, what can I throw your way? Do we need to be going that way? Do you want to keep going that way? Can we come with you? Like, how can we work this out? Because obviously none of us want you to keep getting fucking tapped. Like, that's just a waste of time. We're wasting rounds. We don't have that, those rounds to lose. We can't keep sending you to your death over and over. Please, friend, I want you to survive. What can I do to help you survive? What do you need from me? Those are all questions. Not, hey, fucking shit brain. Stop fucking doing that because you're just fucking fucking us over, you fucking motherfucker. Like, mm mm. No, no, no. Don't talk to them like that because you respect them and you're they're on your team and you want to help them. Don't talk to them like that. There's so many people that immediately go straight to, oh, well, I'm just all day, all day, all day. I fucking just nonstop. All these shitters are holding me back. No, man. You gotta help them. Help them help you. Stop being a freaking moron. Like, actually, you're acting like an idiot if you are doing that nonstop. You really haven't learned by now that there's always gonna be people running it down and a lot of the time they're gonna be on your team. Help them change their outlook. Help them critically think about the situation that they're finding themselves in and work through it with them even if they're not your your immediate friend even if you're never going to play with them again it's still worth it for you to build that mindset of what can i do to help you that is only going to serve you in every way every situation not even just in the team setting what can i do to help everyone around me. How can I be more efficient in helping every little detail go my way? How can I set all of this up to gain the most momentum possible? What can I do to help you help me? That's what it really is. At the end of the day, you're, you are still helping yourself more than anything else. But you have to get it through your head that there's always going to be people on your team that aren't on the same page as you. Just read them the fucking page number real fast. How can I help you help me? That's what this is. And when you do that and you make it clear to them that we just, we just need to be in rhythm. We just need to this, that, this, that. Then they open up to you. Then you're learning more. And then you can have more fun. You can you can play around with them. They're going to be more open to the give and take of the conversation. You can reduce pressure on the rest of your team. When there are just so many variables going on, you say, well, it's not really, we don't need to worry too much about this guy and that guy. If you can kill this person at some point, or at least let us know like if they're there or not, then we have information that we can operate on. We can move forward with really simple communication and be maintaining flexibility with our plan while also involving our teammates as much as possible in the same scenario with the same guidelines in mind of what we all need to get done to win these games. It makes all the difference. You can't be jumping down people's throats the moment they make a mistake. They're just going to shut down 
or even worse, they're going to open up in the wrong way and they're going to fucking let you know what they think. And chances are you've seen it go both ways at this point. I guarantee you, you just want to straight up avoid those as much as possible. That is a huge part of reducing the mistakes is not forcing your teammates into a defensive situation where they just feel like they're all on their own. They're going to go out and make even worse plays after that. When they feel like either, oh, I just have to carry all of this, or, well, my team doesn't give a shit about me, so why the fuck do I care anymore? This game's already dead. Like, it's already done. We've already lost. And at that point, you have already lost most of the time. It's going to be such a much more monumental effort required. I did not know those were not the right words in the right order. It's you're just increasing the difficulty. You're hurting yourself. The chances of you inflicting pain on yourself has increased by so much when you aren't communicating effectively. You got to take pressure off your team and you got to maintain that positive mentality. Now that you have, now that you're not taking things personally and you're not assuming things about other people and you respect everyone in the game and you're having fun, you're having as much fun as you can, then you get to lighten the mood and you get to play around with your team and you get to have that much more fun and you engage them that much more. You lock people in. When they're laughing with you and they're not screaming at you, is it really that hard to understand that you're going to be working as a team that much more? And even if you are still losing, if you can maintain that positive mindset, you're still having fun while you're losing. And then you're communicating about, oh shit, look at what that guy was doing. And you're laughing about it. (laughs) It's, oh my God, these people are crazy, man. You could even ask them what they're doing. By the end of it all, you can have a conversation with them about what's going on. If you're having fun, you leave your options open for communication. You get to do so much more in the game. You're so much more effective personally within your team when you maintain that positive outlook and you say, look guys, it's fucking three to 10 like we've been getting our asses kicked (laughs) there's no beating around the bush but let's give this a shot and maybe it's just some fucking meme shit where you just fucking run it down one way and then it works a few rounds in a row and you say whoa fucking shit (laughs) well maybe we'll just do it over there now. You just keep like, well, I don't know, let's just fucking, hey, hey, like, what, you got any ideas? Like, you got something? Who cares? You're already getting your ass beat. You might as well try something new. You might as well mix it up. You might as well have even more fun with it. You got to keep trying. But as soon as you shut down, as soon as you just turn everything on, I fucking hate everybody. (laughs) You fucking idiots. And they always hold me back. And if I was just out of Elo hell already, and if I just had good teammates, then (laughs) that's what you sound like. That's what you sound like. You fucking whining. If you're not maintaining a positive outlook and keeping your team's head above water, you're not getting anything real done and you are losing. You are actively losing. I don't give a shit what rank you are. I don't care how good you think you are. If you are not maintaining a positive outlook and doing everything you can to keep your teammates afloat, you are not as good as you could be fact that's it at the end of the day that's it you are not as good as you could be if you are not maintaining that positive mental and making it infectious with everyone around you calling people out when they're trying to sink the team is also takes a little finesse not gonna lie but If you can manage to do that tactfully by not just 
jumping down their throat once again, but bringing them along was saying, hey, look, man, everybody's trying. Like, obviously, we're not getting it done. It's three to ten. But you need to let us know if you have better ideas. Like, bring them into the conversation and ask them. Say, look, obviously what we've been doing isn't working. Unless you have a better idea that we can really hold on to, can you at least not actively drown us? <laughs> Is that too much to ask for? And... For some people, it is. I cannot lie about that. You aren't always going to find people that want to work with you. That is unavoidable. And it happens everywhere. Team sports, video games, professional settings especially where people of all types are just jammed into these tiny little spaces and forced to work together almost against their will <laughs> in a lot of situations. You got to do what you can to remove yourself from those situations overall. But there's a lot that you can do to also make those situations way better. And doing a little bit extra, not expecting everyone to meet you in the middle, but still going all the way for them. That's a big deal, and it's going to change people's minds when they see that we just need to get this done, and that's what you're all about. When you're about it, you move differently, and people recognize that more than you think. And if you stay consistent with that, no one is going to mistake the fact that you are not about all that random bullshit that no one cares about. When you move differently and you speak differently than regular people, regular people that are not aware of all of this stuff, people notice. People notice. And they, they want to learn. They want to know why that is the case. It is extremely attractive to be someone that can turn their enemies into their friends. That's the just the way to be. That is the most effective type of person there really is in my mind. Someone that ha that not only has that, but needs to be that way because they understand that you're never gonna run into a shortage of enemies or frenemies, or whatever the fuck word you want to use. It is an extremely powerful tool to have in your arsenal, to know how to affect people's mindsets in just an unrelentingly positive way. It is something that you're going to use all the fucking time. There are no shortage of people that just want to be generally dickheads in a lot of ways. Whatever word you want to put there. Something a little less offensive. Something much more offensive. There's a whole spectrum of people that are not willing to come your way. But when you meet them regardless, that's how you change people's minds. That's how you affect how people react to what you have to say. And then, for the people that are just all the way down on the bad apple end of the spectrum, that's what the mute button is for. I don't like using it. I use it extremely sparingly because I have incredibly thick skin nowadays. Like in League, I know they're <laughs> removing all chat. <laughs> Which is honestly, I personally believe that's the wrong way to go about it. Because there is a lot of good that goes on in all chat as well. There's a lot of fun to be had there. And people do need to just mute people right off the bat. If it, if it affects you that way and you just can't, 
right now, you got to do what you got to do. You have to protect your energy. You have to protect your mentality above all else. And that goes for playing with people that are not constructive. They may be your best friend, but you need to let them know they aren't being a good friend. And that's not okay. If they are not working with you to maintain that positive mentality, they are being a bad friend, just like you are too, if you aren't doing that for other people as well. You are being a bad friend to people, and that is not okay. And you can't allow that continue just like you can't keep playing with people that are not going to work with you to be better teammates and more positive people in general. That's You can't let them do that to you. And they shouldn't want to. If they are truly your friend and they are someone worth being around and playing with and interacting with in an intimate way like this, you have to be on the same page with them. You got to be working together as much as possible. It's not easy to necessarily identify that all the time either. Because there's a lot of situations where it's, well, who else would I play with? Why else am I doing this? You know, they've been my friend for X years to forever. Why I can't just stop playing with them now? That's when you take the initiative to bring them along and really affect their mindset in a positive way as much as possible. That is how you become the best friend that you can be for everyone around you, including every situation, your family, your career, your sports teams, all of it. They could all, and those could all, all of those things could be the exact same people. And if those people aren't your friends and you find them very close to you in every situation, that is a huge problem. Who you keep around is a huge reflection of who you are and what you allow. You have to protect yourself from literally everyone. It's the it's one of the most important things that you can do. You have to be the life raft in as many ways as possible. It is up to you to maintain and build on an extremely solid foundation. You have to be the one that is ready to pull people back up. And you need people like that around you as much as possible for when you need to be pulled back up. It's going to happen sooner than later. It's, a, it's not an it's a if, it's a when. And you need strong teammates there. And you should do everything that you can to not be the weak link on any team. And you find that you do all of this stuff and you do it all well and you're getting better at it all the time and you are still the weak link, that's a team worth being on. That's how I feel about every situation. If I'm the weak link, I know I've said this before, if I'm the weak link, that's a fucking good team. Let's do this. Let's fucking game time. Let's fucking go. If I'm the weak link... Let's fucking do this. I'm ready. I'm always ready. Let's fucking go. That's a good time. We're all going to be having fun. That's a lot of fun. Oh, man. And I'm always having fun. Let's fucking go. And I pride myself in that. That is one of the things that I am the most proud of. It is so much fun to think this way, to know that you can always be this way, that there's always something to gain, that you're never actually losing, and that you have a quality team and a lot of good people around you. That's the, that is the best situation possible. <laughs> what else is there? If you can do that, you can have fun doing anything. I swear, I could stare at the wall 
and have a good time. Because it's all up here. It's all up here. There's nothing else. There's no hiding from it. <laughs> you can just ignore it, but it's never going to get better. And now that you've heard all of this, there's no turning back. I really believe that you have no... Once you've felt it, there's no other way. When it's, it's just undeniable. I truly believe that. And I don't know what anyone could come up with at this point to make me think otherwise. That being frustrated with everything and just being angry is the right way to improve. Nope. Mm -mm. Nope, nope, nope. If that's the way to improve at something, I don't want to get better at whatever that is. That's dangerous. That's shitty. I don't like that at all. No way, man. I don't know what that is. That's that's something violent and dangerous. I don't want to feel that way ever, to be completely honest. I can't imagine how you could be better off that way at any point, doing literally anything. I don't know. <sighs> Good luck with that. It's not for me. Not for me. I got too much fun to have. <laughs> <laughs> I got way too much to do, man. I'm always having fun. Let's fucking go. <laughs> we got way too much to do. We gotta fucking go, man. And if you're pissed off, sorry, bud, you're gonna get left behind. If you can't figure this stuff out, you're not gonna earn a spot on my team. Not in the big leagues. Mm -mm. We gotta go. And you're gonna get left behind. It's not good enough. It's not good enough anymore. You have to do better. Every single day. Every single day. You have to do everything that you can. Change your mindset. Every time you think badly, stop yourself and address it. It has to change. Every single time you recognize it, you have to stop and address it. And do what you have to do to cool off or take a break or just say hey i'm sorry guys that i was i didn't mean that like what do we what do we need to do i didn't mean that like that's that's my bad i'm just fucking around i'm gonna lock in what do we need to do what do we need to do i'm all ears maybe you just need to stop talking maybe you just need to lay off your direction and just ask what someone else wants to do Open up options, ask questions, bring everybody's attention to a focal point in a conversation and say, let's just get on the same page. What do we need to do? What can, like someone just, you know, you have an idea yet? You haven't said anything. You got any ideas for us? And they might not. You say, well, okay, so let's move on to maybe something simple, literally just how about everybody just flips the point that they're on? How about we just change lanes real fast? How about we stick as four or five and let one person split? What can we do? Let's just switch something up. Let's work together a little bit more somehow. Come up with something simple and easy and let's just, let's just try this. Let's try that. Or do you maybe we could go that way or maybe it's just a bad combination of characters. There's always something to ask. There's always more to bring into focus. Keep it simple, but keep it straightforward and light. Lighten the mood. Don't make it super heavy and create a bunch of unnecessary pressure. Because it's really, it's, it's not necessary. You don't need to do that to improve and it's really counterproductive in so many ways. You just have to protect your energy and make sure you're always facing the right direction as much as you can. And it's not easy, obviously. It's very difficult. But it's necessary. There's no getting around it. You want to be a good teammate? It starts with a good attitude. All the time. Every day as much as you can muster it up. 
some days it's going to be way harder than others. And some days you just need to lay off and know that you can get back to it tomorrow. Some days all you do is fucking lose, lose, lose and de-rank. But that's just one day. That's just part of the waves of the climb. It's You have to look beyond each individual wave as this monumental thing and realize you have the fucking rest of the ocean to cover. You can't be worried about every fucking wave. You gotta know how to cruise on top of those little dips. That's all it ever is. You gotta understand you're gonna go right back up. As soon as you go down, you're gonna go right back up. And then when you realize that, that's when you pick up speed and you cut across the top of the water. That's when you actually get somewhere. When you recognize you are not your current rating. It requires so much more of you over so much longer period of time. You have to protect yourself from that mindset. And at the end of the day, gotta be safe, gotta stay dangerous, you gotta take it easy. You gotta be good to yourself. You gotta be good to the people around you. You gotta know that they wanna help you. That they, they, I guarantee you, they don't want to just lose. They are trying to win until they aren't. And if people are just trolling you, then don't take it seriously. It's just one game, man. You report them and move on if it's really that bad. But who fucking cares? Who cares? You don't have to. You don't have to hold on to that. You have to protect your energy. It means so much more than any few losses or any random video game that you don't even actually like. <laughs> I swear, I really question sometimes whether people actually like these games that they play. Because it really doesn't fucking seem like it. Like, you all need to fucking chill the fuck out. It's embarrassing. What is some of the stuff that I've heard people say about games that they like and claim to even love a lot of the time like that's an abusive relationship <laughs> that's what that is you need to protect yourself from that you need to protect yourself from yourself to be completely honest it's a bad mindset is worse than the fucking plague it affects other people in the exact same way it's disgusting and it's something to truly despise not the people that possess them but the infection that it is for what it is you have to protect yourself from it like the fucking cold like the goddamn flu like corona holy shit you have to protect yourself it means everything it's who you are. You have to protect yourself from other people because they're coming after you. And they're going to take the form of people that you've never seen before. And they're going to take the form of people that you've known your entire life and love dearly. Either way, you have to let them know that you have to protect yourself at all costs and that they are not helping you. And if that's the case, that things need to change and it's not okay and that they're not being a good friend or not being good family member to you that's something to address it's something to help people through not be fucking angry at them for it you have to forgive people you have to be good to people just like you have to forgive yourself and be good to yourself be safe stay dangerous and take it easy Good luck with all of your dreams and all of your goals and everything that you need to do. Protect yourself. Protect your energy. Have a good one. And have fun. <laughs> as much as you can. It's the only thing worth doing. If you're not having fun, what are you doing? You, What are you doing? Really? Good luck. <laughs>